Let's get Eric Burns into this one. Hey, Burnsy, what's going on? Mark, what's up, man? FT, uh, what a apropos time to have me on. Pop <laughs> <Hill> gambling. Yeah, <laughs> we got Pete Rose Jr. on the show. Yeah, you know anything about this? <laughs> Are you involved? Uh, look, man, I, I, I just, I've gone on a record before in, in saying that I have never been scared to lay action in my day. And, I mean, it just dates all the way back to my junior high school days when a buddy of mine was running $5 parlay sheets out of the boys' bathroom at lunchtime. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's amazing. I, it's just, just we're in degenerate. such a weird spot with all of this because gambling is now legal in 40 out of 50 states. And I don't think that MLB, the NBA, NFL, they're still trying to tread very lightly uh, into this with some of their biggest sponsors being gambling partners. So, you know, here we are in this Otani situation. And I've had several people reach out on No Filter Network. We, we've, you know, talked internally about, you know, what – you know, our, our response would be just like, hey, you, know, you don't want to speculate, but if you, if you were to ask me just from all the information that I had gotten in the early going, I don't think there's a ton more to this story than what actually has been reported. Now, with MLB opening an investigation, you have to open an investigation, especially if you have money wires that are coming from Shohei himself to this bookmaker in Southern California, you know, it'd be sort of ignorant not to at least look into it. Uh, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know if this is as complicated as people are making it out to be. Could this be some huge cover up uh, for Shohei's own gambling habits? Yeah, but there's no way we could presume that at this point, if this is a bombshell that's dropped later, fine. But there's no way, nor should there be a way for us to speculate upon that. Now, let's say that it actually is Shohei Otani who laid this action and lost $4.5 million. I don't know exactly what the commissioner would do, but it would be up to his discretion only because it was an illegal bookmaker in which uh, the, the, who was the one who took the action. Now, if you look at the rules... You know, it basically says, I, I think players are allowed to gamble, not obviously on their own sport, but you're not going to, you know, look, gambling's legal in all these um, different places now, but is that illegal for Shohei? Like, would that mean some sort of suspension for him from Major League Baseball? If So long as he didn't bet on baseball, I don't think, you know, even if he did drop that kind of coin, that's Shohei's issue. Um you know, I, again, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing was, is really shady. He obviously entrusted uh, uh, somebody who he, I, I mean, that was his best friend by all accounts. That was someone who he spent every single, you know, last day with. And then the the media, the last day I'll shut up here and let you guys go. But the media in LA, I just read something how, you know, they've somewhat turned on him in a 24 hour period. It's like, well, how could Shohei be so irresponsible not to know the whereabouts of his finances, this, that, but look, uh, Shohei entrusted his life with this guy. I mean, the same way my wife could be cleaning me out right now. I'd have no idea. There, there's certain amount of things in my life that I want to worry about in specific finance things. I'm not going to micromanage. I, 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 I would rather trust and be burnt by that trust than to have, you know, have to have this consume my life. And there were what, you know, what it said in the article, this one I literally just read about five minutes ago, was that Shohei needs to start worrying about more than just being a great baseball player. It's like, wait, hold on a second. No, Shohei's job is to be a great baseball player. There's certain basic necessities and things that he needs to address in life. But, he, you know, if anything, you know, from what I can gather from this, he's been burnt, like, majorly by his interpreter by his best friend. And this is just, you know, there's a lot coming at 
us and, and a lot coming at showing in a very short period of time. Bernsey, we've both sat in the FBI meetings in spring training where they show us this movie they made in the off season about you know a guy approaches you at the front desk, you're checking in a hotel, and he's like, "Hey, I recognize you," and he'd, let's go have some beers. Next thing you know, he's like, "How's your arm feeling? How's your leg feeling?" They they taught us to be aware of people that are trying to get inside information. When you talk about Ipe, his his interpreter, he's part of the everyday fabric of the ball club. He's in the clubhouse, he's on the bus, he's on the plane, uh, he's in the hotel, he's driving Shohei to work. They're best friends. If your best friend, and you would you know this, you, you gamble, if your best friend is losing, um, and he's losing a lot of bets, and he has to chase that money and he's trying to recoup, is he going to bet on women's Duke basketball to cover 42 and a half? Or is he going to bet on what he knows? Meaning, I know everything about, I mean, I'm part of the fabric, the everyday fabric. And, and we're saying that like maybe he didn't, or he's saying he bet on overseas soccer or whatever it is. Like, if just as a guy that bets, it, it, you're going to chase and try to bet on what you know best, right? No, you're just going to chase, bro. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, obviously, you take Hawaii, you take the points late night, you go for the over. Uh, that's <laughs> one we all know that happens on Saturday nights. <laughs> right? <laughs> if it gets... You've been getting slammed all day, and it's like, screw it, Hawaii to the over at night, boys. I, it just, it, yeah, it's, <laughs> well, I, you, know, you know what's funny? I mean, as much as I like gambling, I, I've never considered it an addiction. It's something that I just enjoy doing. Uh, you know, each year I would sort of set aside a budget of, hey, look, you know, this is this is what I'm willing to, uh, you know, lay down. And But it, there's, there's also some, you know, really sad stories of, you know, those who have become degenerate gamblers and gambled, you know, away everything. Now, how is that any different than the stock market? It's not, right? It's just, it's just a whole hell of a lot uh, riskier. But I don't know what Shohei, you know, interpreter would have, would have bet on, you know, what he knows. And, um, you know, in the baseball world, yeah, I'm sure he has some great insight. So if it does come down to the fact that he was betting on or against the angels, that would be a problem. Now, is that Shohei's problem? I because I look, there's no way I don't think in any, in, in, in any form or fashion that Shohei is going to be so idiotic to be like, yeah, take us tonight or don't take us tonight. Uh, you know, after you and I had a, a really good buddy, that was a, a bookmaker for a long time. And it, it was like those conversations wouldn't even come up. Like it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even come to, it would never be at a point of, it would never get to that point of discussion when we would talk about the actual say A's or Diamondbacks games or, or anything else. Now, did we talk game? And of course we were talking football games. We were talking this, this, you know, if, if, if he said he likes them, and I also can tell you, and you know this very well, FP, man, on any given night, I could try to tell you, in a game I'm playing, I could try to tell you that, dude, we're going to roll Colorado tonight. And then we go out there and, and say we have Brandon Webb on the mound, and it's 2070, the Cy Young Award winner, and I'm hitting 20 bombs and ripping 50 bags on top of the world. And yeah, we're going to take this thing down. And then Colorado goes out there and kicks our ass. Like you just, that's the beauty of sports. And it, and it just goes to show you, and you know this from being a player, is that there's never a guarantee in any of this. There's just, there's just not. And ga I mean, gambling is very difficult. I think a lot of the, pro the professional gamblers have gotten an edge up because of the algorithms and, and the different algorithms that they've created to try to play it like a 56% plus, you know, rate. Um, but, oh, you know, overall, you just, you, you never know. So I have no idea what these guys, you know, or how far this, 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 uh, this has been taken. I'm going to ask you one more question and don't forget Mark is here. You got to let him play. It's his show. No, okay? that's okay. How, I, how do, how I got does, stuff to do. How, do, how does, how does one, how does one pay off their debts? is say, if you are in debt, when do you pay them off? How do you pay them off? Because there's nine different payments of $500,000 to pay off this $4.5 million debt. Does that raise any red flags to you? Uh, no. I think that's a very dedicated, loyal gambler, a good client. Uh, right? Like someone who's 
someone who's paying his debts. Like they, a lot of a lot of times, and this is how a lot of these these operations will get unveiled, is that you'll have somebody who will rack up millions of dollars of debt and they won't pay it. And then they 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 actually uh, they actually will go to the feds and say, oh yeah, well I'm getting threatened because I lost X amount of money because there's no legal obligation for them to actually pay that debt down. And then what they'll do is open up books everywhere, right? Open up different accounts everywhere and and try to chase this to pay this. And you know it, it gets ugly. Now with Otani, obviously, you know, in or his interpreter who. They had the access to the money, and you know, I don't know what he was betting on. I don't, you know. Again, I, I'm not privy to this information, but it'll be really interesting to see uh, how it shakes out. The feds are all over it. I mean, they're, they 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 haven't they haven't skipped a beat. So I have a feeling they probably know a lot more uh, than anybody else. I do know that I re- yeah, at least I read this is that the feds I, I, at a certain point had said that. You know, or the MLB had said they had not been contacted by them. So, you know, I, I don't know what that means, but obviously now MLB is going to open this investigation, and, and they should. Uh, Eric Burns with us here on uh, 95.7 The Game. Willard and Dibs, FP's in for Dibs. Burnsy, does this all add up to you? Let me, let me ask you this. A, um, this guy, according to reports, to make $180,000 a year. It makes sense that he could build up a four and a half million dollar gambling debt, especially if he wasn't using Otani's bank as collateral. Um, yes, because he paid it, and that's where the nine payments of five hundred grand will come in. And so long as you paid your last debt, they don't care. Right, but my right? point, my point is this: would, would the bookmaker continue to take that? amount of bets from this guy without knowing that he had the backing if he lost. Yeah. He would? Absolutely. Because he knew, well, he knew immediately, think about this, Mark. He loses 500 grand, right? And I, but how's so he get the, that? The, the, but how's he even the, get the, that? The, the, it's, <laughs> this is, and this is funny because this is, this is where this gets, um, this gets a little shady. This it's not up to the bookie to even care where the money's coming from. So if it's coming from Otani and he's Otani back, obviously because he's getting these wire transfers with Joey Otani's name, right? He's getting these transfers. He's like, look, it's, if it's whoever's laying the action, he doesn't care. He knows the checks are cashing, and so once he gets, he's not doing. He's not running. You know, this guy's W nine to try to figure out how much money exactly that he's making. Nor nor does he care. He knows these bets are coming in, and he knows that whoever it was that was placing the bets, once they've lost, they paid off their debt. Right. And so I, once I, he's up, once he, but Mark, once he's up five hundred grand, think about this though. He's up five hundred grand, and so why would he continue to take the bet? He's already up on them. So if he ditched out on another five hundred, he's like, dude, I got his five hundred grand anyway. What do I care? Right. I guess my Make point sense? would be is it totally makes sense, except for that. To me, that speaks against the idea that he was stealing the money from Shohei. Well, um, he knows, he knows that it was cashing. And I, now if, if I would not put it past, I would put it past the, you know, show, Hey, we're the interpreter to, to figure out that this guy had the ability to transfer money like that. Yeah. He, I'm, I'm sure he was, he was making the payment. He's making his house payments, his car payments. He was doing everything right. And, and show he's not married. And I imagine he has a business manager, but you know that's where this gets interesting because if there's a separate like in, in life, it's you know sort of like our government. You want checks and balances. So you have. I know when I played, it was like I had my agent, and then I had a business manager, and then I had a financial guy. So I actually had three, right? And then it's there's three different areas where it's like the business managers watching, you know, what the financial guy's doing, and then you know the financial guys. And is watching what the agent's doing, and there's this kind of this, you know, uh, it's like the three branches of an individual ball player, and it and it works out well. And then, you know, then I got married, and uh, I let Tara handle all of that. So <laughs> from there, I, I don't think it's not as it's not as ridiculous as it sounds to think that Shohei could have been naive to this situation. I also can tell you that it's possible that Shohei 
and his interpreter were laying action left and right yeah. on just about anything and everything. Yeah. I mean, is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, would I be shocked? No, I'm not going to be shocked. I would be shocked if they did so idiotic to bet on baseball. So I don't think that would have ever been the case. And so long as that's not the case, I don't think this is going to be, you know, anything major. Uh, in the world of sports, like everyone's making it out to be at this point. Uh, Eric Burns with us here on 95.7 The Game. Hey, before you go, uh, one non-gambling question. What's it like to uh, play for Bob Melvin? Why is he such a great manager? Well, it, it's interesting because I, there was an article that came out in Fox News yesterday that I sent FP. I told him to read it. He probably I read did. it. I read uh, it. He let you play. Okay. let you steal bases. He took the training wheels off and let you be you. And you were wondering how your career went if he was your manager your whole career. I read it. And, and, and there you go. And so basically the article is about a new book that I wrote, Let Them Play, A Parenting and Coaching Guide to Youth Sports. And, and uh, you know, we, we came up with – you know, a system and a way of coaching literally based on the way Bob Melvin coached. Number one, he was an incredible communicator. Number two, when I got the story I told in the article is that when I got to Arizona, he's like, Bernsey, so happy to have you. It's been pleasure, you know, super fun managing against you, watching all these years. He goes, I got one rule for you. He goes, every time you get on base, I want you to steal. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got you, Bob. He's like, no, no, like, I, I want you to go, man. He's like, you, you, you know, your success rate is, you know, awesome at this point in your career. He's like, I think we can continue to push the envelope. For him. I'm like, all right. So that first year, I went out. I think I stole it was 25 out of 26 bases, and then I showed up the next year in spring training, and he goes, I don't think you understood me. Your success rate is way too high. I want you to go. Every time you get on base, I'm like, done. And so that was the year that I stole 50 bases. And to have a manager that had that belief in, you know, I mean, we hit 3 0, we get to a 3 0 count, and to not have a take sign and to not be fearful of swinging a first pitch and making a first pitch out. And I reference the A's in this, not to knock them, because they, look, the A's taught me how to, how to play baseball at the professional level. Awesome. What Billy Bean and everybody did over there for me, whether it was Bob Guerin, who had an opportunity to play for us now, the bench shows for the Dodgers. I mean, the Ron Plazas of the world, the Keith Littmans. It was just uh, so many great influences in my life. There was an element, and this was my only knock on it, is that I would play scared. I would, I would be scared to run the bases. I would be I would be scared to make it out on the bases. That is, I'll be scared to swing in a first pitch in case I just so happen to pop it up and wonder what Billy Bean's going to say if I you know go back into the you know clubhouse in between innings to take a leak and you know here he is like where are you gonna swing like it's it literally like he would strike fear in that sense. Now with that, Bob was just he was the opposite. Now the irony is Bob Melvin's managed a long time for the Oakland A's as well. And anyhow, he just, he just lets you, he lets you play free. He lets you play fearless. And so we built our entire organization and let them play coaching philosophy. Um, and the entire book was, was, was based on, on that free and fearless approach to, um, to coaching youth sports. And, and instead of over coaching, like we see so often in youth sports these days, it's, it's horrific. And, you know, parents, uh, you know, basically putting their self worth in their child, it, and it's not, it's not good. So, the, in, in order to get the most out of a kid, yeah, you, you've got to, you've got to have them playing free. You got to have them playing fearlessly, and uh, that's it's everything that Bob taught me. Yep, love it. Let him play. Very, very good. Hey, uh, Bernsey, thanks for hopping on today. That was a lot of fun. All right, guys. Anytime.